So, it's Halloween season, and one thing that I and many others like to do at Halloween time is carve a pumpkin. And every year since I've learned how to do it, I've done a photo scan of my carved pumpkin. And you may be wondering, what the heck is a photo scan? Well, in this mildly Halloween-themed episode, I'm going to explain to you what a photo scan is and how you can do one right now for free. Hey, how's it going? Todd here with Vidivo, and this video is going to be all about photo scans, particularly taking lots and lots of pictures of an object and creating a 3D version of it that you can use in whatever kind of cool designs you want to do. Pumpkins are a perfect candidate for a photo scan because they tick all the boxes of what you need for a good one. It has a surface that isn't super shiny or reflective. It has lots of texture and detail that might otherwise be tough to recreate in a CG environment. And it's super easy to get a shot of every single angle, including the top. And it's for these reasons that I've made it a tradition to do a scan of my pumpkin every single Halloween. In fact, this was the first thing I ever made in Blender. And then I eventually learned to add a few extra bells and whistles. And then this year, the new Batman was coming out and I was pretty hyped about it. And then that leads me to this year. So I got kind of the ugliest pumpkin I could find. This one has lots of weird kind of warts and green sort of spots on it. It's gonna capture all of this detail. And uh, yeah, there should be some really cool stuff to look at in the scan. So while I hope it's not necessary for me to tell you how to carve your own Halloween pumpkin, which this time I'm doing a Jack Skellington design for my daughter because she loves Nightmare Before Christmas, I will tell you the best ways to do a photo scan. First, all you need to do is use your phone or a different camera to take a video that captures every single angle possible of an object. Whatever light is present in the scene is going to be baked into your 3D model, so shoot it with a really big soft light source or make sure that you're shooting in a cloudy condition. Do a full scan of the whole object first and then move in and capture details. Try to keep your movement smooth or turn up your shutter speed so everything stays sharp. Then take the footage into After Effects or some other software that you can use to speed up the footage. Speed up the footage a ton. I'm talking like, try to get the length of the entire clip to around 10 seconds or less. Then you need to export your footage as a JPEG sequence. In After Effects, there's an option to do that in the dropdown. Now you can head into your photogrammetry software of choice. You can use Meshroom, which is totally free and does a really decent job. Just load in all of your images and hit the start button and just wait a while while it computes everything. Or you can use Reality Capture, which costs a tiny bit of money, but you only have to pay if you like the model it created and you want to export it. Reality Capture, in my experience, definitely creates the highest quality models. But both will do a fine job if you want a really nice photo scan. However, my favorite way is to use an app called Polycam. Polycam is an app that automatically does so much of this work for you. It automatically takes photos as you work your way around your object and it lets you know if you're going too fast and introducing too much motion blur. Once it's done, it stores all of your various models on the cloud so you can access them anywhere on the internet. I use this app all the time to capture things I see around me in my everyday life. It allows me to build this whole library of cool stuff with interesting textures everywhere I go. It's free to try, and like Reality Capture, you only need to pay if you want to start exporting your models. So anyone can give it a try right now. And here is the model that Polycam came up with. I'm always really surprised to see what I'm able to pull off with just my cell phone. All right, so we have our cool model. Now what do we do with it? Well, I'm gonna play around with it in Blender, which is free to download and I highly recommend it. So first we're gonna import the pumpkin in whatever file format we exported it as, which in this case is OBJ. Then we're gonna remove the bits of the pumpkin we don't need. Hit Shift A and make a new cube. And scale the cube so that it covers up the parts that you don't want. And then we'll add a Boolean modifier in the modifiers tab. 
select the cube and then hit apply. Nice, now we have a nice clean model. Let's make a floor plane and make it black and lower the roughness so that it's nice and shiny. Then let's stick a point light inside of the pumpkin and make it really, really, really bright, like 900 to kind of simulate the candle inside. Now make sure you have the images as planes add-on enabled in the preferences menu and let's import a cool looking fire clip like this one that I found on Vidivo. We'll import it as an emissive plane and set it to around 6 or so to make it really bright and big in the background. And then just place some more lights around the scene until you get something that looks cool to you. And then uh, let's, let's just add one last little bit of secret sauce. This is going to look really cool. First we'll make a new cube and make it really really big and open up the shader editor. We'll make a new material and then delete the principled BSDF and then hit shift A to add a new volume scatter node and then connect that into the volume slot on the material output and change the density to something like 0.05. And boom, now you've added a whole lot of volumetric fog to your whole scene. And after a bit of tweaking and some color correction, here's what we ended up with. Now, I know I breezed through that pretty quickly for some of you beginners, but I just wanted to give you an idea of the potential time savings and creative fun that photo scanning provides. For example, for this year's pumpkin render, I decided to also just scan a whole bunch of other Halloween decorations with cool textures and play around with some shape keys and blender, and I got something kind of like this. So whether you're watching this at Halloween time and you want to scan your pumpkin or you know, a weird car that you find on the side of the street, it, whatever you want to do, get out there, get scanning. It's a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, I hope you learned a thing or two about it in this video. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.